Hello Founders! This video is intended to get you started with the basics of playing Industries of Titan. I'm going to take one minute to explain this video, and then we will get into the game. This video is relevant to Update 10, and there are plans to update the tutorials to help people find their feet. This means that this video in particular will age very poorly. But I really enjoy the game, and I hope that this video can help cover some common pitfalls before the update comes out. In addition, Brace Yourself Games has kindly given me a key for promotional purposes, so my enthusiasm for this game is genuine. If you are making a buying decision off of this video, keep that fact in mind. I am going to assume, however, that you already own this game and possibly that you've already done the tutorial. After selecting New Game, I would encourage you to select Standard Mode. If you win in Standard Mode, you'll be given the option to play and continue on in Survival Mode. If you play in Z mode, you'll miss out on the combat elements, which give you some interesting decisions in terms of how your city gets shaped for defense and such. To experience the full game that you've paid for, I do recommend playing on Standard, and if you're really worried about the difficulty, set it to Easy, because I really don't think it'll be too overwhelming for you, especially at the start. There's currently only one faction in the game, but there are some rather, is some rather good writing uh, in Industries of Titan, and so take a minute to read up on who you're getting involved with. Since we're learning, we'll go for the standard land grant, which is listed as recommended. The other two present interesting trade-offs between access to resources and the number of enemy camps, but the balance start at the standard land grant it will be the most useful for learning, and particularly if you haven't gotten used to refining, the low resource starts will be very difficult. Finally, if you've not done so, enable the tutorials and go through them if this is your first time. Even if they're going to be updated, it's helpful to hear what the developer thinks about the game and what's important. I don't recommend enabling hardcore mode since it will disable pausing and only give you one save, and it can often very be helpful to manually save while making a big decision and see how things might have turned out differently when you reload. This is especially important if things didn't go your way the first time. Finally, take a minute to generate or write a new corporation name and pick a logo. You'll be spending your life with them, so you might as well pick something that you like. In addition to standard construction resources, you will need to manage things that aren't normally considered resources in other games. Moving left to right on the top menu, these resources are Red Artifacts, a rare and precious resource on Titan. In Update 10, Red Artifacts will unlock buildings, and in addition, they'll be used to produce new employees. Influence. Everything goes through the Council on Titan, and Influence represents your ability to sway them. You'll gain one Influence for every four seconds, with the option to increase this rate through building a building called the Council Monument. Influence will let you expand to plots of land and redirect ships to your startup to gain citizens. In addition to your autonomous generation, you can earn influence by donating artifacts, minerals, isotopes, or credits, and use influence to buy credits, isotopes, or minerals. Citizens. Citizens may not seem like a resource, but citizens will be how you earn credits on Titan. Each citizen needs a living space and a job, and they'll earn credits during working hours. With a red artifact, citizens can be converted into employees. Employees will act on your orders from surveying ruins to building and dismantling devices and buildings. You start with eight and produce more by converting citizens using red artifacts. Employees need to be paid and failing to pay them will prevent you from producing more. It's easy to overlook employees, but failing to keep pace with your expansion will mean that your workers are overwhelmed and they'll appear to be ignoring orders when in fact they're just trying to catch up with what they've already been told to do. Credits don't just exist to pay workers they will be used to unlock new ship types and pay for repairs to buildings. Surpluses can be donated to the Council for influence, or they can be banked for an emergency. Minerals. While buildings like the factory and energy pylon are exceptions, minerals can be thought of as the main resource for constructing new buildings and devices. They are also more numerous than isotopes. Isotopes, with the exception of the factory and energy pylon, will be used to upgrade buildings. They are less concentrated and more costly to obtain, but you will use fewer of them for most things. Waste. Waste is not a resource, but your ability to store it is. Waste will block construction and stop certain buildings and devices from working. While it's okay to leave waste lying around at the start, st uh, storing and disposing of it will become a priority as your startup grows. Two final resources are energy, which will be used to power your buildings. Batteries can store some surplus energy, but in the long run you need to generate at least as much energy as your buildings are consuming, or parts of your base will start to shut down. Energy is produced through another resource, which is fuel. Fuel is extracted from the atmosphere, in the form of zethane. But not all of the tiles are treated equally. Cracks, crevices, and sinkholes will leak out zethane, which is converted into fuel by devices and buildings. Concentrating fuel extractors into a single area will not generate as much fuel as distributing them around areas that are rich in zethane. 
At the start of the game, you will mostly focus on building devices inside of the headquarters or factories. Devices have lower costs than buildings, but have smaller effects than a given building. Placing devices is something of a Tetris game, since you will be constrained by the space as well as the needs for a device. Many devices require power, which will be transmitted through relays. In order to be connected to power sources outside of a building, you will need to build an energy bridge within the coverage of your relay network. Relay coverage only needs to be adjacent, not overlapping, and the UI helpfully removes the outline to show you when two areas are connected. Buildings can be placed in isolation or connected. Connecting a building will be the most efficient use of space, but it will remove the ability to burrow, and so these are best connected in areas that you're confident you can defend. Like devices, buildings must be connected to the energy grid, and the energy grid is maintained through energy pylons. One common pitfall is refining. Minerals and isotopes are extracted at Tier 1, but there are three tiers of resources. If you're familiar with other games in this style, refining often means turning one resource into an advanced resource, but Industries of Titan does things a little differently. Your construction materials will always be minerals and isotopes, but the tier of the resource will determine how many construction units that resource is worth. A Tier 1 mineral is worth one mineral construction unit. Upgrading it to Tier 2 will make it worth five mineral construction units. Upgrading it from Tier 2 to Tier 3 will make it worth 25 mineral construction units. Isotopes are worth 1 at Tier 1, 3 at Tier 2, and 9 at Tier 3. If you find that you're running out of minerals, it may be because expensive buildings are being built out of low-tier minerals. It's possible to build a building that costs 50 construction units out of Tier 1 minerals, but think of the cost. Those 50 minerals could have been upgraded to Tier 2, worth 250 construction units, which is a bit like getting a free fuel turbine. Those same resources, if upgraded to Tier 3, would be worth 1,250 construction units. Don't forget to refine. Refining is done through devices. The input module will determine if your refiner accepts minerals or isotopes. These are connected to a processor. Level 1 will go from Tier 1 to Tier 2, and Level 2 will go from Tier 2 to Tier 3. The processor must be linked to an employee module, and multiple employee modules can be attached to process faster. The device also requires an output module where the finished resource can be picked up. It is advisable to attach a waste module since refining will produce waste. The game automatically assigns the best combination of available resources to your construction, but it can be worth waiting for additional Tier 2 and Tier 3 resources to be refined so that you realize the full potential of your mining efforts. These are only the basics of setting up your startup. It's up to you to decide how you would like to place your devices and buildings and what things you'd like to prioritize first. The advisors will inform you of other concerns, such as defense against rebels, pollution, and transport, but every solution to these issues will fall back to these foundations. If you're stuck, think about what you're trying to accomplish. Often, you're wanting to build a specific building and something's keeping you from getting it done right now. Here's a quick reminder of how each of your resources tie into each other. Influence is earned automatically. This influence buys the land on which buildings are built and resources are extracted. Those buildings must be built and often worked by employees. Employees are built from citizens and maintained by the credits that citizens earn. Citizens arrive using influence after you've built suitable housing and jobs for them. All of the buildings and devices that enable the operation of these connections will be built most efficiently by refining your resources and realizing their full potential. I hope you have a profitable time on Titan Founder. Remember, the Council expects results.